Okay, so the recording has started. Uh, good morning and uh, welcome once again. Let's pray and begin uh, this morning's class as we learn more about the prophetic. So we can pray. Uh, maybe Sri Radha, can you lead us in prayer, please? Father God, we thank you for this day. As we come before your throne, you give us the grace. And we, when we will learn from your word, you reveal your word by your Holy Spirit and uh, guide us, lead us, and uh, give us the wisdom and knowledge, God, so that we can understand your prophetic. And we surrender everything into your hand. We surrender Pastor Nancy into your hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for leading us. So in the last class, we um, touched upon uh, the introductory part of uh, the Word of God. And we said that God speaks to us and His Word carries whatever He wants to convey. Uh, his Word reveals His heart to us. And we talked about how God gives us this Word. And we said that uh, in the Old Testament, there were prophets. And we looked at the word prophet in the Hebrew language and there were three words. So when we studied those three words, one is Nabi, one is Roe, one is Jose, we found out that there are two seemingly different uh, processes through which one can receive a word from God. One is a visualization process, meaning um, that individual is actually able to see some pictures or you know anything it could be a static image or a, a, a moving or a motion picture sort of a thing but the uh, way in which god conveys the messages through visual uh, the visual mode whereas the other one we said nabi is through inspiration and when we touched on inspiration there was another word called nataf one nabi is when it bubbles up or when it sort of flows forth from us and nataf is when it oozes or little by little the word comes forth so when a prophet begins to speak they may uh, reckon they may not uh, really know what is coming next but just because they stepped out you know one one uh, part of the puzzle and then another part of the puzzle so they just keep releasing the word and it starts coming out of them so that is the nabi kind of a prophet this much we understood and uh, we had just come to the passage where it says um, you know that uh, uh, when God speaks it's very certain and definite and the prophet uh, the prophets when they gave their experience like uh, Amos he said when a lion roars um, you know it's like that that the Lord has spoken to me and I feel like I need to release it there's a compulsion that he felt uh, and that's the manner in which the Lord speaks. Even Jeremiah says the same thing. He says uh, in uh, chapter 20, verse 7, he says, O Lord, you induced me and I was persuaded. You are stronger than I and have prevailed. So in a way, he's saying, God, I feel like uh, you are strong and you're, you're sort of compelling me to say something. So I have to let, I have to give in. To what you are doing so that's the way they felt when they got a word from the lord uh, now we came to the passage where i said uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the visualization process so there are two key passages that we can look at one is from hosea chapter 12 and verse 10 and there is another passage numbers 12 verses 5 through 8 It'll be good for us to read it. So I'm going to leave it open and request anyone who can read first Hosea 12.10. Uh, and after that, another person can read Numbers 12, 5 to 8. Hosea chapter 12, verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets and have multiplied visions. I have given symbols through the witness of the prophets. Okay. Numbers chapter 12, verse 5 and 8. Then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both went forward. Then he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. 
he is faithful in all of my house i speak with him face to face even plainly and not in dark sayings and he sees the form of the lord why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant moses okay thank you so in both of these passages if you observe hosea 12 god is saying how he spoke and he is telling i have spoken by the prophets and have multiplied visions i have given symbols through the witness of the prophets so god spoke through the prophets that's one and then you have two explanations about uh, the the method so visions symbols okay in hosea 12 that's what we have noted now let's look at numbers 12 in numbers 12 also he he says that um, here now my words if there is a prophet among you i the lord make myself known to him in a vision i speak to him in a dream not so with my servant moses he is faithful in all my house i speak with him face to face even plainly and not in dark sayings and he sees the form of the lord why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant moses so once again here we have vision dream dark sayings enlisted earlier what was it visions symbols okay now visions dreams dark sayings so we understand that the uh, the lord had maybe this was like a sort of a common way in which he spoke to the prophets through pictures now that doesn't mean that god did not speak in any other way because when he talks about moses he says i spoke to moses face to face so in the prophetic realm even that is a possibility but invariably our experiences through dreams visions and he also says symbols okay earlier uh, it was symbols in hosea now in numbers it is um dark sayings they both are the same so what is that you know what are symbols or dark sayings it might mean <coughs> that god may use things like parables so he might give us a picture a seed is being sown now there needs to be an interpretation of what it means so we as we go by the bible we would recognize oh maybe it means the word the word is the seed that's what jesus spoke so god is sowing that seed in my heart something like that so it's a it's a it's a picture that would need interpretation so a parable something like a riddle okay uh, so something that actually needs an interpretation that's a dark saying or a symbol you can't go by what that symbol stands for it would it would need an interpretation for us to actually get the meaning did you all understand what i'm trying to say okay so that is a symbol and a dark saying okay so this is the manner in which god commonly spoke to the prophets in the old testament now in the same chapter we have the experience of a prophet by the name of balaam some of you may have read about him uh, that he was a prophet who um, went into error he did not do what god wanted him to do you know he he was ready to curse god's people to get some uh, reward so uh, of course we don't want to follow his example or uh, you know the kind of uh, motivation that he had but still when we consider his experience as a prophet how god spoke to him there there are some lessons that we can learn so we will look at balaam's experience uh, just to understand the prophetic process how did balaam receive a word from the lord so this is given for us in numbers 24 verses 15 and 16 um i would request any of our online students to read it please numbers 24 15 and 16 it is in our notes as well
Anyone? Jack in, uh... Numbers 24, 15, and 16. And now, indeed, I'm going to my people. Come, is that it, Pastor? Can you hear me? Yes, Jacqueline, we can hear you. So are you reading Numbers 24? Yes, yes, Pastor, Numbers yeah. 24. 15 and 16. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, please and go ahead. Could you read it again, please? Yeah. And now, indeed, I'm going to my people. Come, I will advise you what this people will do to your people in the, in the later days. So he took up his oracle and said, the utterance of Balaam, the son of Beor, and the utterance of the man whose eyes are opened, the utterance of him who hears the words of God and has the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down with eyes wide open. Thank you, Jacken. So in this passage, we see exactly how Balaam heard from the Lord. So we start with him saying, you know, the utterance of Balaam, the son of uh, Bea, Boa, I don't know how you pronounce that <laughs> word, uh, but the utterance meaning what he spoke. Okay, what he spoke, obviously he being a prophet uh, uh, is releasing a prophetic word. That much we, we can figure out. And the utterance of the man, now notice, now there are some details which we are interested in because we are students of the prophetic. It says, whose eyes are opened. Okay, whose eyes are opened. So as a prophet, his eyes are opened. Second, utterance of him who hears the words of God. That's another way. Now, third one, has the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down with eyes wide open. So very interesting. So these are all ways in which Balaam has now received God's word. We can look at all these, uh, you know, ways or methods. Firstly, whose eyes are opened. So Balaam as a prophet seems like he was able to view into the spirit realm or the spiritual realm. We live in the natural realm. When we did Keys to Supernatural Ministry, we said that the spiritual realm overrides the natural realm. And when we walk by faith, that's a reality as a believer for each one of us. Uh, now, this spiritual realm, we can perceive it. We can uh, sense it or we can see what is happening in the spiritual realm through our uh, spiritual eyes. Okay? Uh, we'll come to that later. So now, our spirit man also has senses, one of which is the ability to see into the spirit realm. So, Balaam is saying, with eyes wide open, meaning we can not only see in the natural realm, that with the physical eyes we can do, in the spiritual realm we can see. That's what he is telling us. So there is a possibility to look into the spiritual realm. Now, there is an experience that we read about of the man of God, um, Elisha. When Elisha had the armies come against him, horses and chariots, he tells his servant, no, go ahead. Um, he prays for him. This is in 2 Kings chapter 6. He prays for him that God would open his eyes. And uh, when his servant goes and sees from the mountain, actually there are no human beings as army. But he can see like God's army, a support, like a spiritual support. But this was not visible in the natural. These are not natural beings that he's seeing. So suddenly God opens Elisha's servant's eyes and he is able to look into the spirit realm. Okay, so this is something we have to recognize. God can speak to us uh, by allowing us to look into the spirit realm. 
Now, there are questions people ask. People say, okay, is it uh, through the spiritual eyes? Obviously, through the spiritual eyes, we can look into the spiritual realm. But it may also happen in such a way that through the natural eye, sometimes you can look into the spirit realm. Okay? So, in both Balaam and Elisha's servant's example, it seems like that. Elisha's servant just went. He's looking through his natural eye, but he's seeing spiritual things. Okay? So, that is one of the ways in which we receive the message of the Lord or uh, what God is really doing. We can look into the spiritual realm. Now, let's go further. Yeah, there are other examples in our uh, uh, passage. We won't be looking into every single example, but you can always go back and study it further. Other examples would be things like uh, God gives us uh, a gift of the spirit, which is discerning of spirits. You all know it's part of the nine gifts. So even when we carry that gift of the spirit, you know, when especially when we cast out demons, how can one tell there is a demon, there is a demon? You can't see a demon, right? Like with your physical eyes. But with the spiritual eyes, we can look in and be able to discern. So that is one example that is given. And even uh, Stephen, when he was martyred, uh, we see that he saw Jesus standing uh, and welcoming him, right? And applauding him. How did he see that? He was looking through his natural eyes, but he saw heaven. So even through the natural eye, he was able to look into the spiritual realm. So we can have such experiences. Even Isaiah, he talks about how he saw heaven, you know, in the year that King Uzziah died. I, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne. So I saw the Lord. So the experience of actually being able to look into the spirit realm is something that uh, we can look forward to. And it can happen, right? That, that's one of the ways in what, which God communicates. Now, in the experience of Balaam, he also said, who hears the word of the Lord. So, another sense that we are talking about, which is to be able to hear. The ability to hear. Till now, we said the ability to see. So, when it comes to hearing the voice of God, um, what we know is that when God speaks, it's like a spiritual voice. Okay, now it's nothing new because if you and I are a believer, it's common. God has been speaking to us. We've made so many decisions on the basis of what we heard in our spirit. Okay, and the spiritual voice is not necessarily an audible voice. Audible meaning uh, where our our human hearing sense hears it. Rather, it's a it's a quiet voice in our spirit man. Where we, we hear, oh, God is telling me, don't do this, do that, go here, no, go there. So it's a spiritual voice and not necessarily audible voice. Now, in the case of uh, Samuel the prophet, when he was so young and uh, he was dedicated uh, and given to God, left in the temple, there was an incident, right? First Samuel chapter 3, where in the night, Samuel is hearing his name, Samuel, Samuel, and he runs to Eli each time. And uh, he thinks, oh, Eli is calling me. Uh, so initially, Eli says, no, I didn't call you. Go back, sleep. But towards the end, uh, Eli recognizes, oh, I think God is speaking to Samuel. So he teaches him and he says, the next time you hear that voice, you say, here I am, Lord. Okay. Uh, and uh, so Samuel responds. When he hears the voice of the Lord in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 9, he says, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So is it possible for somebody to hear the voice of God as if it was, you know, audible to our human hearing sense? Yes, it's possible. See, here Samuel is saying that he's hearing God's voice. He's just a small boy. Okay. So literally, it was it was real for him. He just woke up and went and checked who's talking to me. So audible is also possible. Uh, but what we have to know is that usually when there's the audible voice of God, the message 
is carried to the person who is concerned. So others may not be able to hear it. So I may be hearing the audible voice of God, but others may not be able to hear it. Now we see examples of this um, in the book of John. There is a time when you know God is speaking, but his voice is thunderous. It's sounding like the voice of the angels for the people. But the people are not able to actually hear what God is speaking to them. Even in the book of Revelation, Apostle John, he writes the, the voice of the Lord is, is like the voice of many waters. Okay, the, the, the sound of many waters, like a loud thunder. So our understanding is usually God speaks with a spiritual voice. There's no uh, uh, human, you know, sound in that or, or, or let's say natural sound. Okay, but sometimes even that is possible. But when that happens, generally the person who needs to hear the message hears the words, whereas the others may just hear a thunder or a, you know some other kind of a heavenly experience. Okay, so that's how the hearing happens. Now, uh, you can definitely ask me questions maybe towards the end. I'll just go on and finish uh, what Balaam explained. So one is seeing, one is hearing, third one. He received the knowledge of the Lord. So what is the knowledge of the Lord? Knowledge of the Lord is like, uh, you know, for us who use computers, we are familiar with downloads. So when there's an attachment, okay, sometimes it's just a very small, you know, a few MB uh, Word doc, you, you download it. There's a little bit of information in there, you use it. Sometimes we are downloading GB, you know, heavy files, uh, high speed internet, quickly we download like huge uh, pieces of data and we use it. Okay, in, a, in the click of a button, we know how to download. So this is very similar. Receiving the knowledge of the Lord means God releases his thoughts. In moments, we may get like downloads of you know small pieces of information huge pieces of information uh, it really depends god's thoughts his words his impressions it comes into us and we think hey till a moment ago i i didn't know what was what is going to happen or i didn't know what decision to make you know i didn't know what sermon to preach i didn't know which song to sing but all of a sudden you know how do you know something came into your spirit okay so that is that is what receiving the knowledge of the lord is god just puts it into our spirit and we retrieve it from there we use that if you may want to call it data okay so that's an experience which balaam had and uh, uh, he was able to hear from the lord it, it came into his spirit and he picked it up uh, and he says you know he saw the vision of the Almighty. Now, earlier we talked about being able to look into the spirit realm. Now, he more specifically says the vision of the Almighty. So generally, when we say vision, vision has to do with something like a motion picture. We are so familiar with movies and, you know, um, uh, like pictures, stories that are recorded. So we understand what that means. So God gives visions to convey what he's saying. There are many visions in the Bible. Some of them have been enlisted here. Um, visions could be just a message that comes or, uh, you know, a vision can be so much more than a message. Uh, so some examples of visions, if you study the book of Ezekiel, full of visions, he kept having visions as a prophet of God, Daniel. Today, we are uh, looking into many of the prophecies of Daniel, the visions that he had, you know, they are reality now and many things are unfolding, many things will unfold. Uh, look at the book of Revelation. Those were the visions that uh, John the Apostle had on the island of Patmos. So visions are a way in which God speaks. 
again in the vision itself there can be things that are literal meaning the meaning is what you see but then there are things which are figurative the meaning is something completely different like if you look at the uh, visions that uh, uh, daniel had you see you know a uh, a uh, Uh, an image uh, a little bit is made of bronze a little bit is made of you know some uh, metal uh, another part is made of clay now this is figurative we have to sit and interpret what does that clay stand for what does that bronze stand for you know what does that other metal stand for isn't it so in this way god can reveal in visions to us now again when it comes to visions people ask questions vision okay when does god give you a vision uh, at any time the truth is yeah any time god can give a vision so um, maybe we are awake we are praying we are worshiping we get a vision or we are in the lord we are ready to hear from the lord at any time maybe we are just going about our daily tasks we get a vision it can happen any time you get a vision okay um uh so you get a vision when you are awake now when we are when we are sleeping can we get a vision yes so many a time dreams are nothing but some people say like shut eye vision you're actually sleeping but in the sleep how god said earlier right i speak i release my word so when we are sleeping we get a vision and you term it as a dream right so it, there are many many variations of how god can speak but these are some basics that we are understanding so god can help us look into the spirit realm we can hear the voice of god we can get a download of information from god which we are calling knowledge receiving the knowledge of the lord then we can also have a vision from the lord then here in balaam's experience he says he fell down with eyes wide open this is referring to what we call as a trance okay a trance uh, so what is a trance trance is an experience where a person uh while while hearing from the lord or while receiving god's message um uh, is experiencing physical weakness they they are they are not functioning they just freeze and in those moments god is speaking so a good example would be that of peter you remember peter acts chapter 11 he's so hungry and uh, uh, in he's praying to god and god suddenly shows him a vision but that vision happened when peter were, was in a trance he he was not doing anything he was physically like you know weak and sort of uh not moving he was just hearing from the lord it's as if he's asleep okay uh so trances also were the experiences of prophets so we are not saying that you know every, all of this can happen to all of us bits and pieces of different kinds of experiences can happen to all of us but we it's good to know what are the possibilities balam says these are all his experiences these are ways in which he actually heard from the lord so <coughs> god can use a combination of methods to communicate his message um and one must be open to it now god's message can come in the simplest ways okay simplest ways sometimes just your the primary way in which of course is the bible we should not uh, you, you know we should not neglect that that has to be the primary way that god speaks to us now over and above very simple things like your even your daily activities for jeremiah uh, yeah, god speaks to him he uh, you know speaks to jeremiah through pottery and the wheel oh great profound message coming through just that so we may be going about our daily activities 
but through something so simple god can speak something so profound okay so it can happen in that manner and of course you know god can reveal in all the ways that we spoke about now uh, daniel in daniel chapter 2 and verse 22 says something so very beautiful he says god reveals deep and secret things he knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him see our god we say is omniscient all knowing we know in a limited way but god who knows everything can release to us what he thinks is important that's what a secret secret is what he knows what we don't know but maybe we need to know it and then he reveals that to us so this is the god we serve who reveals deep and secret things so we can desire to know what are deep and secret things uh maybe solution to some problems maybe uh you know like we 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 want to know about our future so that we can prepare ourselves isn't it uh or wisdom god's wisdom in different circumstances situations if god speaks it would be so nice you know things will work out uh, so much better or interpretation when you look at people like daniel look at people like uh, joseph how did he interpret dreams how did he get so uh, you know effective in interpreting dreams because they depended on god even daniel i love that uh, passage where it says um, the king had a dream and he wanted somebody he was so disturbed by it he wanted somebody to interpret it and then finally you know they found daniel but the beautiful thing is he never even told the dream to daniel so daniel went figured out the dream figured out the interpretation came and told the accurate version to the king i mean how do you like this the person didn't even tell the dream but daniel came back with the dream and accurate interpretation because god is the source he knows everything nothing is hidden from god so he reveals the deep and secret things okay so that's the key to depend on the lord and of course understand all these methods but ultimately when you're depending on the lord who knows everything he's there right to guide us and to uh, direct us to help us and show us what he really wants us to know okay um daniel 228 when daniel speaks uh, regarding this matter he says there is a god in heaven who reveals secrets there is a god in heaven who reveals secrets so yes this is about the experience of balam uh at this point if there are any questions any thoughts please feel free we can discuss and then we will proceed to the next chapter uh ma'am uh, in the first thing we are saying about like uh, what it means like eyes open yeah so like uh, we discuss like like we can see with your our spiritual eyes mm-hmm. and also we can see with our Uh, like with our natural eyes we can see yes. and also with spiritual eyes mm. so natural eyes means like we have discussed like how uh, stephen saw and how uh, elisha saw and so and uh, those and we have seen this like uh, so i want to ask like the seeing in like seeing through spiritual eyes means dreams and visions or is it something different seeing through spiritual eyes okay is that dreams and visions um see it can be with both right with my natural eye also i can see some something that god is doing i i can see it with both so dreams and visions are not limited only to spiritual eyes even through natural eye maybe we'll be able to see certain things so but is it like we are seeing from natural eye what the seeing with spiritual eyes means yeah see seeing with spiritual eyes means maybe i i'll put it this way then you'll understand you see when you close your eyes meaning you're not using your natural eye and then you're seeing something okay 
So that is looking into the spiritual realm without your natural eye. But if you're looking into the spiritual realm with your eyes opened, then you're using your natural eye to look into the spiritual. Huh? Correct, but you can even see visions and dreams with your natural eye. Like, like a movie. You can. See, like especially in a trance maybe, I'm just giving an example. Your eyes are open or maybe you know, you're know you fallen down uh, and you're, you're not moving. And you're seeing all these things. Your eyes may be closed or your eyes may be open. You may actually, but the, the main part is that God is speaking to me through visions. So um, I understand where you're coming from, but these technicalities may not really matter at the end of the day when God is speaking through this eye or through closed eye or whichever way. But did I answer your question? But yeah, you can have dreams and vision. See, dreams, as I said, um, it's in the night when somebody's sleeping. So okay, fine. So not through the natural light. So for dreams, we could say it's not through the natural light because person is actually sleeping. But visions, we can see through the natural light also. <laughs> yeah, no, if you desire, it's important to desire. It can happen. It should happen. God should speak to us. That's why we are learning about all this. Yeah. Uh, yes, Jackin, you have a point here. I'll just quickly look into it. Pastor, when God reveals to us certain things, it is not necessary at all times for us to reveal or speak to others. It's for our own eyes to open and see the things of God right. Yes, uh, Jackin, it's most of the time, that's what it is for. In a in an instance where God tells you or impresses on your heart that that message is for somebody else and you're supposed to communicate it, then you communicate it. So good example would be Joseph. You know, he saw all these amazing dreams about his future. And we know if he would have just kept quiet, he may have escaped being sold, <laughs> you know, to Egypt, into Egypt. But he went and he just went ahead by sharing his dream at the wrong time. And it created so much trouble in his life. So everything we see, everything we hear is not for us to tell. Okay, so you're right, Jackie. You're right about that. I hope uh, you're fine with it. Okay, great. Yes, thank you. Ma'am, uh, when we are speaking about dreams and visions interpretation, ah. so when, when we are speaking about uh, prophecy mm -hmm. in the interpretation, so the first thing we have to say is it, it should align with the word of God. Correct. When we are interpreting dreams and visions, is there anything like that? Yeah. So when we uh, when we say prophecy, you you are saying it should be aligned with the word of God, right? Similarly, interpretation. Yeah, definitely it has to be aligned to the word of God. Dreams and visions, when we interpret, <coughs> if it doesn't fall in line with the word, then um, we can't accept it. What about when, when Daniel, everyone, when they interpreted and all, they didn't have the word of God right then? But they had the Holy Spirit, no? We also have the Holy Spirit. Correct. So that's what, the Holy Spirit. Now, you're, you're right. We have the advantage of having the word with us. Okay. Uh, but one scripture, uh, I think it's uh, 1 John 5, 7. Let me, yeah. For there are three that bear, uh, oh, this is the NKJV version. Let me read. Uh, sorry, NKJV version. Huh. For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. 
so it's telling us the father the word and the holy spirit these three are one okay now if you want to read further also you can read it, that also kind of similarly talks about agreement um but even with this one scripture what do we recognize the father the word and the holy spirit are one so that means the word will the holy spirit will not say something which the word is not saying you understood so the holy spirit has to be in agreement with the word only then we can accept it so when we say things like prophecy dreams visions these are the works of the holy spirit how can holy spirit work against the word right so when it comes to interpretation of dreams people may come up with all kinds of interpretations and say spirit of god is leading me to say this say that we can check it with the word okay if spirit is saying it's one with the word so it has to be the as the word says now if it is going opposite then you can just reject what they said because the spirit and the word have to agree if spirit and word are not agreeing we cannot accept it okay so yeah we have the advantage of the word of god uh, so whatever we sense the spirit speaking we can check it with the word of god now going back to people like daniel i think they were just so strong in the lord so connected to the lord that they were led accurately by the spirit so that is amazing without the word also <laughs> like now it's before also before in their their uh, old testament mm, when you say the work of holy spirit is same uh, like now how with how holy spirit is working within us yeah so um i think you mean in terms of communicating to the people right so ha huh. yeah correct yes he worked the same way in the past he's working the same way right now with us the only difference is we'll see later uh in the old testament the prophets heard from god now we all hear from god because we all have the holy spirit living inside us so that's that's the beauty of the new covenant so earlier they they used to go looking like when we'll come to all this when uh, saul lost his donkeys they wanted to find a prophet i mean imagine today you lose your keys and you need a prophet to help you find your keys right but we don't have to do that anymore in those days they did it because that's that was the only way you have to go find a seer then seer will tell you go here this is what god is telling me this what today you don't have to run behind any seer we all have the holy spirit he can speak to all of us so that's the difference like in old testament each holy spirit they have to speak to anyone ha cuz now we can only see like uh, the spirit of the lord used to come for sometime and then leave for sometime but it is not like okay correct so the question prince is asking is in the old testament was the holy spirit there with people so the presence of the holy spirit was there we we can say that but what we are talking about is the anointing so to minister the anointing would come and go the prophetic anointing it won't live inside a prophet okay so that is the difference yeah chira has a question can satan come with a dream uh yes he can he can come with a dream uh so we must discern which dream is really from god and which dream is from satan and if something is from satan um it will it will instill fear intimidation so when all that happens we know it's not from god what what must be we do reject it in the name of jesus so there can be dreams which are not from god rejected in the name of jesus okay so with that we'll stop chira i hope you got your answer uh, we will pray and close for today okay we've run out of time okay wonderful uh, thank you let's pray
Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for everything we heard from you, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us to hear from you and be a blessing, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Nina. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Meet you in the next class.